We're standing literally right next to the stairs that the president will walk down in just a little bit when Air Force One arrives. That is Air Force One. It landed at approximately 1224, a couple minutes ahead of schedule. Police right now, David, are being very quiet as to who the suspect is at this moment. They're trying to put everything together right now. But unfortunately, a 13 year old did die in one of those shootings. Well, you can see behind me now, I'm on Baker Street in North Chattanooga. The sun has melted a lot of the snow, but if you move just a little closer with photojournalist Jared Guest is moving with me, you see now we are on ice and slick moving roadways. Nice, give us a big thumbs up. There you go. Investigators tell me crime in Cleveland is up, and most of it surrounds this venue behind me. They began their investigation the day that they were notified of possible evidence missing out of the property and evidence room in mid-December. That's right, Cindy. Some teachers at Lee University did cancel their individual classes, but for the most part, the university was open. The Ponzi scheme is also called the Pyramid Scheme. Say you begin with one investor who's promised a certain percentage return every month or every couple months. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Glover. And I'm John Newland, and Tristan V. Sexton. In your news, any youth coach in Tennessee or Georgia who does not make parents sign a concussion form is breaking state law. And that goes for all sports, all ages, public or private schools, as long as the team collects any sort of fee. Now that tax day has come and gone, many Americans will be deciding how to spend their refund checks. A new survey from Hipmunk finds many of us will likely spend our refund on travel. Now among 4,000 people surveyed, 54% said that there was that was their first choice. The top destinations on their wish list, Italy, Hawaii, Australia, Paris, and London. Now the average refund this year is about $3,000. But you could use that money and go to Las Vegas. Why? Well, the online dating company Zeusk studied nearly 1 million members from across the country and found Las Vegas may be the best place to find a mate. Detroit came in second. Researchers say the cities have singles who may be more open-minded. Among the least open-minded cities for dating, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Birmingham, Alabama. Investigators who've looked at the video of Monday's tragic accident outside of Chattanooga Valley Elementary School say the school bus driver was not at fault and will not face charges. We're learning more about six-year-old Zachary Bryant and the moments that led up to his death. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Vince Lennon was at yesterday's press conference and has the latest. That was Vince Lennon reporting. A memorial garden is planned on the Chattanooga Valley campus to honor Zachary and another student who recently died. As for the bus driver, he's still employed and could be behind the wheel soon. Superintendent Rain says that decision to return will be left up to him. It was a frightening way to begin the season at at t Field Thursday that started off with the national anthem and a skydiver slamming into the ground in front of the crowd of over 5,000 spectators. Yeah. All right, thanks, Nick. Appreciate <laughs> you it. And your top story this morning, as Nick mentioned a little bit earlier, what a difference a year and a clear forecast can make. If you recall, this same weekend last year was pretty much a washout due to weather. As Nick mentioned, a number of events and fundraisers went down the drain with the deluge of rain, but it's smooth sailing this time around. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Vince Lennon has a preview of today's bumper crop of activities. And in other news, a two-year-old child is recovering from a pit bull attack. It happened just before 6 yesterday evening in Rossville. Neighbors say the child suffered a serious bite to her cheek. We're told the injury will require plastic surgery. The Walker County Sheriff's Office says animal control is in charge of the investigation. The dog was taken away by authorities. No word or condition on the child this morning or whether the dog owner could face charges. Of course, we'll keep you updated as information becomes available. And the TBI has launched an investigation into an incident at the Athens Police Department by request of the police chief. District Attorney General Steve Bebb kept the information very general, saying only the chief had a, quote, particular matter surrounding the department to be looked into. Welcome back. For some students who catch the bus to school in the Avondale community, early mornings were filled with foul language, fights, and junk food that was until one couple decided to make a difference. I spent some time in Avondale getting to know this couple this past week who's making a lasting impression in these students' lives. <laughs> some coffee. Hours before sunrise in Avondale and Dorothy and Chris Roll are busy at work picking up trash along the street and setting up a buffet of fruits, veggies, and snacks. Good morning. It all began when they moved into the neighborhood about a year ago. Their first run-in with the students at the bus stop across the street was dismal, to say the least. We saw children, saw children 
using profanity. <laughs> they didn't feel like anybody cared. And we wanted them to know that someone did care. They set out a tent and food, and sure enough, the students came. <laughs> Before long, the profanity and fighting stopped. The trash along the street was picked up. Students like Jahan Ellison had a place to go and someone to talk to. <laughs> I love them so much. I feel like I left her in good hands. They've developed a great bond, and I really do appreciate what they do. The Rolls spend nearly $1,000 of their own money every month. We really can't afford it, ma'am, to be honest, but we cannot afford not to do it. We choose to live here instead of using that $979 to live in East Ridge or to live in uh, Highway 58 or Ottawa, which $1,000 a month, we can live pretty comfortably. Mm -hmm. But our heart is here. They say they were compelled to act without recognition, and they'll continue to do so as long as there's a need. I love y'all. <laughs> get an amen to that too. <laughs> amen. God won't release me, and that's just the mandate that he's got on my, her, on my heart to do this, and I can't stop. The rules feed about 40 students a day. On average, they sell produce and socks to keep the students fed, which makes them between $12 and $20 a day. Now, while it is a financial hardship for them, they say the outcome is well worth the cost. Now, this story has gotten an overwhelming outpour of support from you through social media and calls to our newsroom. If you'd like to help the rolls, you can find information on how to do so on our website, wrcbtv.com. Jack Brown with Brown's Tax Service in Saudi Daisy is in hot water after abruptly closing the business. The sign that reads, due to health issues, Brown's Tax Service is closed, is posted around the building. But many wonder if that's truly the case. Court documents allege a Ponzi scheme. Frankie Trantham had to see it for herself. I know it has to be true because I had money with him. Trantham says she invested $20,000 with Brown, money she may never see again. That was the last 20 that I had, and it really hurt. But according to Trantham and others who spoke to Channel 3 off camera, nearly a 1,000 investors trusted Brown with their money. It's sad that you trusted a man all these years, and then this happens. The Saudi Daisy Police Department tells me they received a number of complaints about Brown's tax service, but they're just a middleman in this fight. All they can do is pass along the information to the IRS. The IRS will not talk about specifics of an investigation. Channel 3 obtained court documents from a Dayton attorney who filed a motion today to ask that someone take over the property. In that motion, it claimed that investors gave Brown more than $4 million for stocks and securities. The court documents claim Brown used it to purchase assets for himself and his family and tried to cover it up in an elaborate scheme. We were unable to reach the Browns today, but investors have plenty to say. Jack, I trusted you, I loved you, and you said you loved me, and your whole family did, and I'm very disappointed. The robbery happened on Sunday in the middle of the day, a time when most store clerks may have their guard down, but in this case, adrenaline and instincts took over when danger was close. And my hand is actually still hurting. Nine months pregnant, and this convenience store clerk pulled all the right punches when a man tried to steal scratch off lottery tickets. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. I'm just thankful he didn't have a knife or a gun or anything. For her protection, she asked us to conceal her identity, but her story has to be told. It all started on a beautiful fall Sunday afternoon. A man walks in and asks to purchase five $20 lottery tickets. I took him up to the register and I was standing about right here and as I was starting to ring it up, he asked me what the name of them was. As I looked down, he jerked them out of my hand and I grabbed and jerked them back and he jerked them again. Pure adrenaline took over. And then when he grabbed them, I just come out and I swung. That's, and then he fell. The robber didn't know he was now face to face with someone who took karate for more than 10 years. Hit his head here and then he fell completely out on the floor and as he got up, he gave me a funny look and ran out the door. The clerk chased him and spotted his getaway car in the corner of the parking lot. Inside, her mother, who had been in the corner knitting a quilt for the baby, called police. Honestly, I would have thought that I would have went into labor on this whole situation, but I didn't. Looking back, she admits it wasn't the smartest idea to attack the attacker. That could have been really bad. I could have lost my life that, at that point in time. That's just my natural thing. If you come at me and I feel threatened, I'm going to hit you. The Catoosa County Sheriff's Office confirms another gas station 
person at Cloud Springs Road was hit by the same person about an hour before. That time, the thief got away with six lottery tickets. Police say he's still on the run, but likely won't be visiting this gas station again. That's just a face I won't forget. Now, this clerk describes a suspect as a black male about six foot two in his mid to late 20s. On Sunday, both convenience store victims describe him wearing a blue shirt and a blue beanie. He was seen riding in a silver Honda Civic and a new model Nissan Altima that day. If you have any information that could help authorities track this man down, contact the Ringle Police Department or the Catoosa County Sheriff's Office. Live in the studio, John Cole Newland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. This pile of cinder blocks is all that's left of Ray Central Church of God's youth building that washed away Sunday during a flash flood. That's my youth building right there. All church members could do was watch and cry as a portion of their beloved church washed away. We're seeing this go away. We're seeing our TVs and things that we have in there, our teaching tools just going down the stream and there's, there's nothing we can do about it. Brian Pinky taught in that building. He says a group of women were inside just before the water took it away. The water just rose within minutes. So when I seen it crossing, I went in there and told him we got to move now. We got to go. Thankfully, no one was injured, but a tree fell and damaged a couple cars in the church parking lot. We need help. Pastor Jeannie Brown says the building that washed away was actually two adjoined buildings. One was not insured, and the children were only able to use it for one day before floodwaters destroyed it. I was mad at the waters, but I wasn't mad at God. You know, but we can rebuild. We can rebuild and. Uh, that's what we're here doing now. It is a blessing from God that no one got hurt. The Salvation Army and the American Red Cross are helping, but church leaders here say they'll accept any help they can get. In Ray County, John Quill Newland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.